Okay, welcome back. Um, it is day 228, I believe, um, of coding every single day. Um, yeah, today, again, back in the lab, weekday. Um, I worked on, like, okay, so I trained my model, like, a like, couple days ago, and got my, like, best results so far. And I was very skeptical of those results. And today I found out those results were not true because um, I was doing, because my, when I do more rays in my scene, the scene slows down. So it's like in real lifetime, um, probably 30 seconds equates to like five seconds in the simulation because it's so slow and laggy um, because I'm just capturing at such, I'm just capturing at 20 Hertz and I'm firing off a thousand rays. And so it just, it, the computer, it takes a, it has to like calculate phase information for every single one of those rays. Um, caching actually slowed down the simulation. So caching didn't help at all. Um, so I just have to kind of take it. Um, but anyways, when I did my data splitting, I was doing, so leading that into is I wanted more data, right? So I want to, to overlap frames. So instead of just having like, a three second time interval for like a frame to like train on. Well, I mean, I still have a three second time interval of like a frame or two, I think it's two second actually. Um, and then like a two second, two second, two second, I was overlapping by 50%. So it was like um, these 40 Hertz of information um, is one sequence and then not the next 40 Hertz, but the, the 20 Hertz that is in the latter half of that first sequence and then 20 Hertz after. So it would overlap a lot, giving me a lot more data. Um, so yeah. Um, but the issue came in, which I would shuffle that information and then split it. And so what happened was, is we had a 50% overlap, right, of information. So when I split things into testing and validation and training, a lot of that testing and I mean validation is stuff that is in the training because it's an overlap. So it was just, it was training on stuff that's going to be seen in validation. And so it did well because it was trained on that exact data. Um, so that's why the results were so good. Now it's not like so demoralizing because switching that out and doing like other stuff, the results aren't like a coin toss or worse. It's like, I can already see myself at like 80%. Um, it's not as beautiful as the numbers were on that flawed model, but it's definitely like there. And I think there's a lot of stuff I can do at like baseline data collection that can enhance that. Um, but I don't have a lot of time. I mean, I have this week and next week and then uh, then it's the last week. I mean, it's, it's insane um, how the time has flown by, I guess. Um, so yeah, um, but I have like a lot going on this week um, in, in terms of not research stuff. So I don't know, maybe a lot of late nights um, this weekend, maybe. I don't know. Not this weekend. I have to do it. I don't know. Anyways, lead code. Um, lead code, another easy. It was just given a matrix. Return the lucky numbers. A lucky number was something that was the minimum on its row and the maximum in its column. Um so instead of instead of just looping through everything and for each element checking its row and column which would be pretty inefficient um because that would be not it would be o of n for the traversal but then it would also be well not o of i mean yeah o of n for that array it'd be o of n times m but doing that for each element right that's wildly inefficient so Instead, I did O of N to just find the minimum thing in there, in the row. And then once I found that, then I'd check the column. Um, there's probably more efficiency stuff I can do there of like, um, you know, if you know that a particular column has already has like a maximum in it, then you don't have to check that. Um, but that would probably interfere a lot with like storage and memory and, and whatnot. So... I think that's a pretty good solution. Um, so yeah, um, that is all I have. I will see you tomorrow for day 228 or is it nine?
Okay, bye.